This is the entire new Ninjago wave, but I am about to show you the coolest way to fix 15 of the included minifigures and make the worst Ninjago minifigures the best. Let's go. Okay, so the first minifigure we need to fix is Empress Beatrix. Lego actually only forgot one major detail. She's missing her cape. It's not much at first glance, but if you give it a second shot, it makes her look like every other soldier in the army because everyone is wearing those chest plates. And because of that, she could easily be mistaken with any other person. And chaos would reign Imperium. So let's change that. I ripped a cape off a Mandalorian minifigure. Oh crap, he didn't like that. Ooh, uh, here's some Beskar. Okay, now I can attach the cape to our one and only leader. Looks this. But if you watch the last episode of the first wave, you can clearly see that the cape is red and not black. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'll paint the cape with red acryl color. First the front, then the back. And then I'll attach it to her back. You can choose whether you want it to be on top or beneath her armor. But know that if you want it to be show accurate, it needs to be on top. And it looks like we are finished. Except that there had to be one more thing we need to change. And it's her weapon. They actually gave her one. And admittedly, a cool one at that. But it isn't accurate at all. And also not worthy of a leader. It's the one every soldier has and chaos would reign empire again. She rather has a dominant stick thingy than this sword weapon thingy. But luckily they made a pretty accurate stick thingy for the Imperium Guard. So just take that one and she could already be mistaken to be the ultimate empress. Except that we can even do better than that. Take a golden stud with a hole in the middle and attach it to the far end of her weapon. Now detach the lightsaber hilt and paint it grey on the top and bottom. You can even take the black middle section and either replace it with a golden one or, if you don't have one at hand, also paint this one. I don't know about your gold color, but I have to add several layers of mine to fully cover the black piece. Now paint a slim edge of black around the corners of the cloth and add a bit of orange. Now reassemble the entire weapon and to top it off, also add two dots of grey on a black base on either side of the golden connection piece to make it look like it's reinforced by some strong metal screws. And the leader finally has completed the ultimate transformation. It becomes even more apparent if you compare before and after. The non-upgraded version appears like a servant now. I'm really glad she's not the empress of my LEGO Imperium anymore. But talking about leadership, for our next fix we'll need Lord Ross. He appears to be second in command in the military of Imperium until Beatrix locks him up and Raptor became her right hand. But that shouldn't restrict us from upgrading him. So let's get a game plan. We need to know exactly what we need to fix. And that is why I got you some some reference images. Now we can successfully determine that his hammer is more like a cooking ladle than a fearful weapon. But what's most offsetting are his missing teeth. So let's change that. I'll take my white acryl color and paint the teeth. This process is like boiling rice. You don't need to do a thing, but I'd say we've cooked ourselves a pretty good looking Ross right now. But we can even make him more spicy by adding a bit of gold to the bottom and side of his legs. Now they match better to the arms, because those are printed as well. Another very tiny detail is a small blob of grey on his nose. It's not much, but makes his snout pop so much more. But what have I told you about the cooking ladle? Uh, sorry, I mean hammer. It's a bit confusing, sorry. Anyways, we can't leave this item like that. The top is too big, whereas the bar is too small and the wrong color. So I'll take a small black bar and attach the golden lightsaber hilt on the top. Now I'll add a golden stud with a hole in the middle. And for the hammer itself, I found two 1x1 studs I can combine with the orange cheese slopes of the original hammer. Now this hammer is already looking good, but if I add a bit of color, we should be able to turn it into the GOAT of all the weapons. The process is simple, but crucial, to make the weapon as accurate as possible. First paint the cheese slopes almost entirely golden. Only leave a small section of orange. That will symbolize the energy line on his hammer. It's probably also the same energy he used to defeat a dragon with a single blow. I bet it comes from dragon energy. Okay, so once this is done, take a small brush and make those black outlines on the hammer. They are definitely the hardest thing on the entire figure, but definitely worth it. Now take a golden pin and attach it to the snot on the black of his chest plate. This way, Ross is 100% accurate, since he can transport his hammer on his back. Okay, so we fixed Empress Beatrix and Lord Ross. Following that, also the heroes need to acquire new looks. And I'd say that the ninjas are pretty dang drippy in their new hoods. But if you compare them to the LEGO version, you definitely know who took the L. A game plan isn't even necessary here. It's obvious that we need to fix the hoods when the ninjas are not wearing the entire mask. So my first figure will be Kai, since he comes in a poly bag with a small temple and wrap them. So if I mess him up, it's really cheap to get a new Kai. Not that I want him to end up like one of those women cut in half. I'm first gonna cut off the front section of the hood, because that has to be the easiest way. Just make sure that you're 
always working away from your fingers. Now, in the show, the ninjas also don't have the ZX part on their hoods. If you don't know what it is, I'm talking about this extended circle on the back. It can hold up to two swords and was originally introduced with the first armor the ninjas ever had. But now, it's definitely not part of the ninjas anymore. They don't have any weapons in the show at all, only their elemental powers. So I'll remove that part. And now I think I've managed to create a perfectly accurate looking Kai first try. Now I'll repeat it for Lloyd, Zane and Nia, since those are the ninjas that appear in the show right now. Okay, so we've got ourselves the entire squad now and it's looking fire. Except that those stubborn shoulder plates still set me off hardcore. But before I fix those, I need to get the second set of ninjas because the upgraded ones look really cursed with their masks on. So I unboxed like every Ninjago set and once I got the ninjas, I now finally can get crafty. I'll paint the ninjas pair by pair, starting with Kai again. You know why. His pauldron is dark red, but because I only have red, I'll have to mix that color. The painting is really easy again. I'll do the exact same pattern for Nia. Zane is a bit different, however, because not his whole pauldron is covered in a different color. And Lloyd, well, he's an outlaw. For him, we need to paint the mouth cloth and not the pauldron. Now we have a total of 8 customized pauldrons, so let's gear the ninjas up. And that brings us to a total of 8 ninjas we fixed, and an overall score of 10 customs so far. But here's another small but neat life hack for your ninjas without ZX armor. You can give them a cape to make them look even more drippy. I know it isn't show accurate, but it looks pretty dang cool. But that was only the start. I'm also going to fix the new ninjas. Starting with Sora. She's wearing her headphones for 90% of the show. The only problem, Lego tried to make a version, but failed terribly. She should be wearing a ponytail with cat ears and not two tennis balls. So I grabbed this Sora and another Sora. And my plan now is to take the hood and separate the ears from the rest of the hood. I'll do that with a bandsaw. Due to safety though, I'll grab the Lego piece with tongue only. Okay, so the surgery was successful, which means that I should be able to attach the ears to the head. Except that the ears were too far back. So I quickly carved away some of the inside of the ears, until it was fitting more or less. Now my next move is to also cut Nia's hair and connect the two pieces with glue. This time, however, I'll do it with a scalpel, because I thought it would be easier. The key here, though, is to get both cut straight, to make the connection as smooth as possible, which I didn't quite achieve. Okay, so the glue dried, and it's incredibly sturdy but it couldn't look worse. But I started with the molding process anyways. And so I started out with an oversized amount of putty, so I can cut off sections the way I like. This entire process took me around two hours, but hey, it's for content. And as a reference, I'll use the screenshots I took earlier. Then I'll make two small cylindrical shapes for the headphones, only to realize that I have to remove them again, because I want to slightly change the shape of the headphones themselves. And to finish the molding process, I'll create two identical pieces symbolizing those small microphone thingies on either side of her headphones. And now, into the oven. Okay, so my next step is to mix the correct color and paint the headphones. Then I'll mix the corresponding color for her hair and also paint that. And the figure is almost completed. However, I want to have a happy face for her, without her eyes being pink. So I'll repaint her eyes black and make a white iris. And holy crap does this look good. But only because this figure is finished doesn't mean I'm done at all. Erin, Ryu and Sora 2.0 are still missing. Her second look is the one with the hood. And when looking carefully, you can see that it is exactly the same as the one of the ninjas. Except that the shoulder plate is missing and she hasn't got the ZX part on her back. So it's still a huge difference between the Lego version and the accurate show version. So I'll remove the shoulder plate together with the ZX part. And now I also want Sora to have her ability. And that means that I'll once again have to repaint her eyes. This time in a stark pink. And I'll also exchange her hands with the ones of a crystal warrior to become a real Oni. Okay, so now that we've got Sora and Sora, it's time to fix Eren. But when unboxing this figure, I realized that one of the figures had a slight misprint. The whole face was too far up, which made the figure look very cursed. Imagine fighting against this Larry. Obviously, I'll also remove the mouth cloth and the ZX part on this figure. And from what little I saw in the trailer, Eren has a dark orange pauldron and a dark orange mouth cloth. Ta-da! The magic of editing. Now the last character will be Ryu. And what can I say? Let's just say nothing. 
I'll start by fixing his wings. The inner sections have to be bright blue, but after that, the easiest task is already out of the way. The more challenging parts are coming. His pupil is black and not dark blue, and also the iris should be a clean white. But why is this challenge harder? Well, it's a very small detail and therefore difficult to paint. Next are his scales. They are bright blue rather than dark blue and are way smaller. So I'll first have to erase the current ones and then I'll paint the new ones with the corresponding bright blue. This is nitty gritty work, but definitely worth it. And the last thing is the underbelly. It isn't hollow and not the same color as the top. So I'll fill the hole with some putty and paint the entirety of it in the almost same color as the wings. And that brings us to a total of five customs. Twice Sora, twice Eren, and once Ryu. And after doing the maths, we have an overall score of 15 customs. The only problem? LEGO has not yet released a decent battleground for their minifigures. We only got this... Cool temple. Definitely not as epic as the one of my friend Colin. He's created the ultimate temple and playground for your minifigures. So definitely check out this video and give him some love. See ya!